So there's a new kid on the block of automation systems, and that new kid is called Respell.ai. Well, does that mean that Make.com or Zapier or N8 or whatever it's called are dead? No, of course not. But I think especially Make should really take notice. Because the guys at Respell do have something really interesting on their hands. Because they are... I feel like they're building the next generation of automation platforms. Now, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to the channel now and don't forget to ring that bell icon or click on that bell thing. Anyway, my name is Alex. Let's take a look at Respell. All right, so to begin, we're going to take a look at the Respell editor, basically where you can create your spells they're not zaps they're not scenarios they're spells here essentially it's kind of reminiscent of make at least for me there's a modules but the way that they kind of work it's not linear you can slipstream things into other things which is kind of nice so our first initial scenario that I want to try out, of course, we're going to be using uh, Airtable, you know, what else? And the idea here is that I want to give the system any website, in fact, anything new and even a search, like it doesn't have to be a website, it can just be a term, right? And I want Respell to Google that and provide me with a summary and finally print that summary and the summary part. Now, in terms of the Airtable database, there's nothing really to discuss here. It's really straightforward. We just have the inputs, the trigger, and the place where we want to store the summary. The way that I'm going to be running this now is via make. So we're going to be creating, we're going to be essentially using a respell as a makeshift API thing that we whole basically and that then in hand pushes that data into an endpoint into a webhook essentially and that then finally pushes the data back into Airtable. You might say Alex this is a little bit too complicated. Well um, I don't know the point here is that you have a very slim make automation and in fact we can set this up to work through Airtable. I don't think you even need to use Make at all, but in this particular video, I'll probably do another one for this other way that you can just use Airtable and Respell alone. You don't need to use Make, but for this particular example, I'm gonna be using a Make. So yeah, like I said, the database is very clean. We just have one automation that simply triggers our Make scenario, very straightforward. When a record matches conditions, get summary is checked. We run our very much favorite script where basically this is the script. You just have to replace this with your make webhook. Don't forget to add a input variable with record underscore ID, just like I have done here. And don't forget to map the Airtable record ID into the value placeholder. That's it. From that point, finish and just turn this thing on. Let's take a look at the respell scenario on its own. So the way that this works is that we have a basic input that in our particular case is just the website input, right? Then we use a module called web search. Now here I need to pass this website input into the search query that then produces a search result basically that can be a little bit scrambled at times so what we do next we basically want to add that scramble text back into Claude now this is awesome again because I mean in my opinion Claude is kind of superior to ChatGPT in many ways but you don't have access to its API just yet. At least public access is not permitted. You have to be like invited to it. So in this case, I want to take that gibberish and I want to pass it through Claude so that it gives me like a nice summary of that thing. So the way that it works here, unlike Make, in order for me to create this sort of prompt and instruction, I have to 
First, combine my text. In other words, to create my prompt, I have to use this combine text module, which essentially is like a, almost like a variable, I, I feel, where I'm basically saying, I'm hard coding the following. Please summarize the website below to the best of your ability, the website, and then the input variable from the previous step. So in that sense, this is kind of like reminiscent of how make works, right? Right? There is like a sequence. You begin with an input, there's a search, there is a text. Then here comes the slipstreaming. So here I want to provide another input for the instruction part for Claude. And essentially I'm using another input module where all I'm saying here is you are a savant copywriter with years of experience in analyzing long text and providing with effective summaries. So yeah, th that little uh, savant thing is a nod to Josh, one of my prompt engineering buddies. And yeah, he's always told me to make sure that <laughs> you praised AI make AI feel nice about itself. But anyway, I digress. So that is basically our instruction. And the prompt just includes the gibberish text. Now, this then needs to be reformatted into proper JSON. Very easy to do. All we have to do is use a ChatGPT4 module, which also needs a prompt and an instruction. Now, the prompt can simply be the text that Claude provides very straightforward but in terms of the instruction i'm giving it a little bit more i'm telling it so please reformat the following text you should your response should, should be strictly a json payload nothing more do not include any other text than the reformatted json the json data should always follow this this following structure summary reformatted text uh, the text to reformat again the summary so then ChatGPT always will provide us with that little reformatted text in JSON. Well, J JSON friendly text. Because if we were not to do this, the summary would really not be able to be pushed through the API call that I'm just about to perform. Now, at this point, the API call is right here. And as you can see, I'm adding an extra input to that API call. It's called ATID. Now, this particular input is interesting. And again, very unlike me, in the sense that you can kind of put it at the end of the so-called spell. Technically, this input happens here, right at the beginning, because here in the beginning, I'm going to be providing with the website input from Airtable and the Airtable ID. So visually, it's a little bit confusing that you're throwing it at the end. You're kind of like placing this at the end. But really, when you're gonna when we're going to be performing the call in a split second, this is going to be right in the beginning. This is one of those variables that we have to provide right in the beginning. So API call. Then I need to provide with the webhook. So my method is post. The URL is our webhook basically up until this point, right? So right here, that's our webhook that we catch over here. That's what make told us to get. Then there is a question mark. And then from there, we just put a little variable called ATID equals, and then we just map our ATID input into it. From there, the last thing to take into consideration is this body part, where all we have to simply do is just map the summary that we get from ChatGPT4, the reformatted JSON payload. So yeah, and that's basically it. Finally, there is an output. So. Let's see how this whole thing works from beginning to end. Oh, actually, before I forget, let's take a look at the setup of make. So as I was saying previously, we trigger the records here in Airtable. There is a script that runs that pushes make. There is one scenario here. The basically we get the request and push to respell. So here we simply fetch that record ID from Airtable. We get that record because we also want to know what the name of the website is. We use an HTTP module like so, where we have our URL, the method post, 
the authorization, the bearer and API key values, and then simply the request content. Respell makes this incredibly easy to understand how to set this up. So when you go ahead and you try to publish something like here and you press update, it will give you all the stuff that you need to know to create that call essentially. So let's take a look at how this is done. All you have to do is just click on API and then my favorite way of viewing the world is through curl. So just make sure that you choose curl and then you have everything that you will ever need. You have the URL that you need to hit, that you need to post to this. You have the authorization header, which is really straightforward. Just copy paste this as I've shown you here. So authorization, bearer, space, and then the API key that Respell gives you over here. And then the data, which is all of this part over here, just between those two quote marks. Copy that, paste it in, replace ATID with your ATID and replace the website with the website that you want to input. Make sure that parse response is always on and OK. So that particular scenario will push data into Respell. Now, once Respell is done, we needed to push data back into Airtable. How this is done, very easy. Just have a webhook ready. Now, this is a bit of a special one, so there is a little nuance that you need to take a look at here. When you're creating your webhook, or if you've already created it, just make sure that you edit it and go to advanced settings and make sure that the request headers, the, re the request HTTP method is yes, and the JSON pass-through is also yes, because otherwise this is not gonna work. Press save, okay. Then the next thing is that we have a parse JSON because this particular bad boy is going to produce us with the summary. So make sure that you parse that JSON value. The way that you do it is that once you get the value from here, which is kind of like previewing, we, we, we're previewing it here. But once you do that, make sure that you copy that structure as is, press add, then give it a structure name and then generate. Paste that data in and press generate again and then press save. I've already done this. And yeah, the final thing is just to make sure that you map the actual value in so that make can parse it. Final step is just updating the record in Airtable. Your payload from Respell will always include the ATID because that's set up. And finally, your pretty prettified string is going to be here from the JSON parse module. You see how different that is, right? Because we have summary and then there is a clean text instead of, you know, this sort of JSON formatted text that we get from the payload itself. And that's it. So let's turn this bad boy on and let's run some examples through it. Get summary. So first it will go through to pushing this data into Respell. It takes a few seconds. It's not the quickest thing in the world. But then we should receive the payload on this end. As you can see, it's taking its time. There we go. And that should be ready. There we go. That worked. Now we can use this example. It's an article from BBC. Again, behind the scenes, the whole thing is running. But, I mean, I haven't set up anything fancy, you know, to notify us that, hey, yes, everything's happening like I usually do. Hopefully, after a few seconds, this should arrive. Is it? Yeah, there we go. Cool. That was a quick preview of Respell. So, in conclusion, what are my thoughts about Respell? Honestly, I think that they still have a long way to go. Personally, there is a lot of things that I would like to see changed or made better. So for example, over here, as you can see on the screen, when you're going through the motions and you're editing this thing and you're maybe previewing it and you're running this, for instance, let's say test, right? 
When I press run and I'm testing the scenario, I don't know what's happening. There's just like a blue loading thing and then that's it. I don't see what the system is doing behind the scenes, which is a big issue because even in Zapier, in Make and, and any other you know, modern system, you can tell what is happening. You don't just get the output. It would be nice to be able to track every single module and its output before it gets transferred to the next module. That's one minor complaint. For now, that's the biggest gripe that I've got with it. But otherwise, it's a really interesting product. So yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.